Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to join the others in congratulating you, Mr. President, on your election as the President of the 74th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. I would also like to thank Her Excellency Maria Espinosa for her dedication and stewardship in, the successfully, in successfully completing her work of the 73rd session of the General Assembly. Malaysia welcomes the theme of this year's General Assembly, which is galvanizing multilateral efforts for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and inclusion. The key message of this theme is galvanizing multilateral efforts, which is what the United Nations stands for. I will propose a few. Almost three quarters of a century ago, five countries claimed victory in the Second World War. On the basis of that victory, they insisted on the right practically to rule the world. And so they gave themselves veto powers over the rest of the world in the organization they built, an organization they claim would end wars in the solution of conflicts. The veto power, they must know, was against all the principles of human rights which they themselves claim to be the champions. I kill, it killed the very purpose of the great organization that they had created. It ensured that all solution to all conflicts could be negated by any one of them. Broken up into ideological factions, they frustrated all attempts of solving problems. Each one of them can negate the wishes of nearly 200 other members. It is totally and absolutely undemocratic. Yet, there are among them those who berate other countries of the world for not being democratic or being democratic enough. How much longer should this group be allowed to exercise its power? How long? Forever? The unspoken time frame seems to be eternal. The very power, that very power has resulted in an arms race. Each one of the five rely on their military might in order to challenge any attempt to take their power away. They feel they must be well armed to retain their right to be privile the privileged five. It is this structure of the United Nations that renders it incapable of achieving its principal objective, that of preventing wars between nations. Indeed, the structure had enabled the promotion of wars within countries and between countries. True, the warlike European countries have not gone to war with each other over the past two, two thirds of, the, of a century. But elsewhere, there is evidence that European countries have caused wars to break out, arms and funds to be supplied, and active participation in prolonging the wars. It is apparently good for business, for weapons sale. Mr. President, the first act engineered by the Western countries is the creation of the State of Israel by seizing Palestinian land and expelling 90% Arab population. Since then, wars have been fought in many countries, many related to the creation of the State of Israel. 
And now we have terrorism when there was none before, or at least none on the present scale. Military actions against acts of terrorism will not succeed. We need to identify the cause and remove it. But the great powers refuse to deal with the root cause. They prefer military action and sanctions, and they will continue to fail to stop terrorism. Malaysia accepts the state of Israel as a fait accompli, but it cannot accept the blatant seizure of Palestinian land by Israel for their settlements as well as the occupation of Jerusalem by Israel. The Palestinians cannot even enter the settlements built on their land. Because of the creation of Israel, there is now enmity towards the Muslims and Islam. Muslims are accused of terrorism, even if they did nothing. Muslim countries have been destabilized through the campaign for democracy and regime change. Muslims everywhere have been oppressed, expelled from their countries, and refused asylum. Thousands have died at sea and in the severe winters of Europe. One cannot deny that in, that in the past there were no massive migration. Now the wars and instability due to regime change have forced them to run away from their countries. I will admit that democracy is a better form of government than dictatorship, but democracy is not the easiest form of government to operate. This is especially so when the adoption is overnight. Time should be al allowed for a gradual change to democracy. Indeed, the very countries which promote democracy because became democratic over a period of decades, if not centuries. The result of overnight switch to democracy is destabilization and civil wars, reducing some into governmentless wilderness. And some, of course, have reverted to authoritarian regimes worse than the one that was displaced. Unable to suffer from wars and violence, their people have to migrate. The great democrats talk incessantly about the rule of law, but they are selective. Friends may, be, may break any law and get away scot-free. Thus, Israel can break, break all the international laws and norms of the world, and it will continue to be supported and defended. The unfriendly countries can do nothing right. There is no justice in this world. Mr. President, I must again refer to the fate of Rohingyas in Myanmar. Many colonies of the West Many colonies of the West, upon independence, expelled non-natives in their countries. But nowhere have they been as brutal as Myanmar. Even natives of the country were massacred, brutally killed, and raped in full view of the world, backgrounded by the burning houses and villages of the victims. They were forced to migrate, and now they dare not return to Myanmar, even when offered. They cannot trust the Myanmar military unless some form of Myanmar non-Myanmar protection is given. The helplessness of the world in stopping atrocities inflicted on the Rohingyas in Myanmar had reduced the regard for the resolutions of the United Nations. Now, despite UN resolution on Jammu and Kashmir, 
the country has been invaded and occupied. There may be reasons for this action, but it is still wrong. The problem must be solved by peaceful means. India should work with Pakistan to resolve this problem. Ignoring the UN would lead to other forms of disregard for the United Nations and the rule of law.